Hello everyone, welcome to Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches episode 7. I'm Monica, the host. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Morux, M-O-R-U-X, or you can find me on Instagram as Quarrelsome Rhino. And I have been pretty active on Instagram lately. Um, I've been trying to post at least once a day, and those, like, challenges that everybody's been posting lately have been really helpful with that. So, um, I'm hoping to post a little bit about, um, about, uh, or post one of those challenge photos, <laughs> um, every day this month. Um, and I tried to do it in the month of February as well, but time sort of got away from me. So, I do have quite a bit to share today, um, and, um, some of it I can't really share, but I will talk about it a little bit. Um, I think I will do that at the beginning of my works in progress section. So we'll have works in progress. We ha do have one finished object, um, and a little bit of acquisitions and a new sort of segment of my podcast is going to be, um, about spinning because as you might have known, or if you follow me on Instagram, you'd know, um, I posted, um, I got myself a drop spindle and spun myself some yarn. So, um, I'll share that with you and then, um, yeah. Um, so I guess we should just get started. I think at the end there will be a little bit of, uh, sort of, uh, life, life things section. <laughs> I haven't really figured out what to call it yet. Anyway, um, but yeah, so let's get right into it. I think I will start with finished objects since I only have one. Um, and these you saw last time. These are the, um, Cosmic Wonder socks. So these are done in Green Lambkin yarns, um, on her Sparkle Sock base in the color Cosmic Wonder. So these are the socks. Let's see if I can focus. Nope, we don't, we don't focus apparently. All right, well, and then there's, I don't know what my lighting situation is today, guys. Um, it is ridiculously sunny outside. Um, for Maine in March is very strange. Anyway, so I guess if I hold them over here, you can see them. So it is, you can see a little bit of the sparkle. Um, they are fairly sparkly. Um, and here's the other side. Yeah, so I finished the second sock. Um, it took me a little bit longer than the first sock just because um, I was tired of knitting them. Um, because I get tired of knitting um, plain socks, but um, let me see. So this is her tag. And it is 75 merino, 20 nylon, 5 stellina. Yeah. So, um, she is, um, also a podcaster. Um, and I actually, I really love watching her podcast. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I definitely will be getting myself some more of her yarns pretty soon. Um, I have my eyes on a few colorways. So, um, yeah, so that is my finished object. This goes into my box of socks. Um, I'm also, I also put it into the, um, free all the house elves on the yarn hoarder podcast. And this counts for the Euro stash cal because, um, that's for the, sorry, I just assume you know where all of these things are coming from. They are all on podcasts that are much more famous than mine. Um, but, um, on the Becky Sorensen on the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the stringing it together podcast right now has a Euro stash cal, um, going on where you are supposed to use at least 50 grams of, um, European indie dyed yarn and this counts, um, Green Lambkin is based in the UK. So there is that. So these are finished. They go in my box of socks. Um, I know that not everybody, 
I guess some people are wearing their box of socks, some people aren't. Um, I actually think I might save mine and start wearing them next year. Um, <clears throat> although I say that and I've already worn a pair of them. Um, but anyway, what I probably won't wear too many pairs of them. Um, <laughs> so silly. Okay, so um, since that is my only finished object to show, I'm going to move on to what works in progress. Um, and I'm going to start off with um, the... <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the crowdfunding campaign that Verena Kors and Hannah Lisa Hafferkamp are doing right now. Um, it's called Woods Making Stories. Um, it is... Uh, the campaign is still on Indiegogo. I think they're at like... They're really close to their goal. They're at like at least... I think they're at least 85%. I forgot to look it up before I started podcasting, <clears throat> but, um, so they're, um, uh, um, I am doing two test knits for the pattern book, um, <clears throat> and, uh, I can't actually show you the, the, objects that I'm working on. So those will be, I'll put them on the podcast later once they've get, given us the go ahead to share the full um, object. I can show you sort of work in progress pictures and um, <clears throat> work in progress um, things and I can show off the yarn. So um, as long as I'm not showing off like the whole pattern basically. Um, so um, last time we talked, I wasn't, um, I didn't have my yarn for the second um, test knit that I'm doing and I finally got it in the mail. There's 10 skeins of it and it's this beautiful squishy merino, French merino yarn and it is gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> so this is the brand. It's, um, it's De Rirum Natura in Serrano. Um, this is 100% merino. Um, at least I'm almost positive. It says it somewhere. Yeah, 100% um, merino. Yeah, so it is so fluffy, so squishy. I'm so looking forward to having a garment made out of this. So um, I mentioned last time I am working on the Black Forest cardigan. And um, I figured I could probably show you my gauge swatch since that's not actually the pattern, um, but you get sort of an idea of what the yarn looks like. Um, so here is my gauge swatch. It is in this lovely blue color that is going to be so difficult to photograph. Um, but oh my gosh, I love this. It's just so squishy. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, so, and it is, it is soft. Um, I know I'm going to have some leftover from, I mean, I'm already, I've already broken into the second skein, um, on the, uh, in the test knit. Um, but I know I'll have leftovers. Um, I'll probably have one ball extra. Um, and I did that on purpose because I didn't want to not have enough, especially because I knew how long it was going to take to get to me. They took almost a month to ship it to me. So, um, I wouldn't meet the deadline for the test knit if I um, kept, if I ran out of yarn basically is the, is the answer to that. So anyway, so that's, um, that's one of the test knits I'm doing. That's called the Black Forest Cardigan. Um, it is a pattern by Verena Kors um, and it's lovely um, so far. Um, I'm really excited for this project. Um, because it's, I don't know, I think it's really neat, um, sort of indie published books, uh, pattern books, I think are really great. Um, and then the other test knit that I'm doing for them, it's the Abisco socks. Um, and I do have, this is a half object, um, and I can't show you any of the pattern, but I'll show you the foot of the sock. There you go. You get the foot. Ha ha ha. Um, yeah, so I'm finished with one of the socks. I have not cast on the second sock um, yet, 
but um, as soon as I make progress on that um, that cardigan, I will. Because I know that this isn't going to take me very long, and I know exactly how much, like, I don't have to count the rows this time on the sock, so I know that I'll um, be going a little faster. So this is Tuku wool in their fingering. It is fingering. It is 100% finish wool, and I know I said Norwegian last time, and I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> 100% finish wool and it's the color Joku I think is how you pronounce it. It is this again a lovely blue. Um, this is much lighter um, than the other blue yarn. Um, but yeah so there is that. I'm keeping that in my Heinelisa Haverkamp um, bag and I love this bag. Um, it is the perfect size for a skin a pair of socks project. Um, and I just love the contrast. Um, this is linen and it's got a herringbone pattern on it. And then the bottom is a wool felt sort of, um, I guess wool felt, um, base. Anyway, so it's in this like really deep forest Greek. I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. Yeah. So there's that. Um, so that's, those are the two test knits that I'm doing, and that's the, one of the reasons why I don't have a whole lot of progress to show you on anything else. Um, because those, uh, I need to finish those by April, and, um, I've got, uh, anyway, I'll talk about that in life section. Anyway, uh, um, uh, but yeah, so I don't have a whole lot of progress on anything else, um, but I did have started some projects, so this is another of my Hanalisa Haverkamp bags. Um, this is a sock work in progress. So last night I finally cast on this um, one lupin yarn. Um, I'm, I th the colorway is called Kelp Garden. It is my, my one lupin is my local yarn store. Um, and they source all of their wool and um, everything from Maine. And they also get it spun in Maine if they don't spin it themselves. Um, <clears throat> but yes, um, I will probably be getting my fiber from there when I start actually spinning Yeah, more often. Anyway, so I really don't have that much of this knit up yet. It's a little sock mustache. Anyway, so... <laughs> Um, this is not going to be a vanilla sock. I kept saying that I was going to make a vanilla sock out of this, but I think I am going to do, um, I purchased, uh, Mina Phillips, um, New York sock collection. So I think I'm going to make this the first pattern in that, which was just released yesterday. And, um, if you haven't bought your book yet, uh, I, I strongly urge you to do so. She is a very, very wonderful designer. Um. I really love all of her patterns. I think they're um, all gorgeous. Anyway, um, so the next um, work in progress I have to share is, <laughs> all right, so this is my Koru cardigan, which um, is a fingering weight cardigan, um, and the pattern is by um, Francois, Francoise Denois, uh, Frenchie from Aroha Knits. Um, she, this is, um, this is a project that I've been wanting to finish, even though I know I'm less than halfway through, but I just want it to be done so I can wear it. Um, I have so much that goes with this color that, um, that I really, really just want to wear it. Um, and I've just been distracted by other projects and yeah. Anyway, so I finally cast on, so I have already finished the first, the left side of the sweater, and so I cast on, this is the right front panel of the sweater, and it's got this lovely lace pattern on it, and that continues all the way up the side. Um, but yeah, I've gotten about 20 rows of this complete, and there's probably 200 and something to, in, in the... Um, in yeah the side so it'll take a while but at least um 
at least I'm making progress on it so that I can actually wear it someday. I'm sure it'll be just too hot in Maine by the time I'm finished with it, but um, there is always next winter. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I have said before, I tried to cast on, <clears throat> excuse me, I tried to cast on the seamless version and I kind of wanted to claw my eyes out because <laughs> Um, I was having to look at, um, five different charts for every row and like interpret the charts. It was, it was a nightmare. And the pattern says it's recommended to do the seamed version. And I was just like, no, I'll just do the seamless version and then I won't have to sew at the end. Okay. That would be fine. Except that looking at five charts and interpreting them made the progress so slow that I had only done 10 rows and I, like, I hadn't even finished one pattern repeat yet and I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, I was, so I ripped it all out and recast on and I finished the left side in, like, a day's worth of knitting and, um, I don't understand why I didn't just do it this way to begin with. So, so, um, the moral of that story is listen to the designers. Um, they know what their pattern is best for. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I am keeping this in a bag from Knit Picks that it says, um, she taught me to knit, um, which has been a great amusement and it's a Jane Austen quote. Um, I am a very big fan of Jane Austen. Um, Regency era and Edwardian era, England, are probably my favorite periods of history and um, a little bit of Victorian as well. Anyway, but um, I love Jane Austen. Um, let's see, my last work in progress as far as I know. Um, I haven't put any work into my blanket because I got frustrated with it because of those mini skeins that were too small. Um, my last work in progress for anyone who watched last episode, um, I was talking about the Halli Hallibop? I'm gonna go with Hallibop. Halibop. Halebop. It's an Amber O'Brien um, mystery knit along, um, that is how you spell it. Um, anyway, so she has released clue three and I'm not even done with clue two, but if you are participating and you want to look away from the podcast for a few minutes, I am going to show my progress on it. So, um, the day that I posted my last podcast, I cast on clue one and I finished that by the end of the weekend. Actually, no, I finished it. I think I finished it the next day. And then I hadn't, I didn't make any progress on it. Um, it's kind of bunched up. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. So the first clue ends after this lace section here. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit about this pattern. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say too much cause it is a paid for, um, pattern. Um, but it's got, I have never done this before. It's an I cord edging, but that you do it as you go. Um, and it's got this lovely, um, slip stitch sort of pattern. Anyway, so I am using three knit picks yarns for these. Um, I had this one in my stash already. I was going to use it for a blueberry waffle sock. Um, but I decided that I wanted to put it into a shawl instead, and this was the one. Anyway, so this is um, their Hawthorne speckle in the, I think it's the blueberry speckle sock um, yarn. And then, I don't know if you can see, oh, there we go, that makes it a little easier. So this um, like light purple, or it's not light, it's this purple color here. Is it purple? Yeah, I would say it's purple. Anyway, it matches the darker um, speckles on, in in the blueberry hawthorns. So they these two go together. And then I wanted something sort of plain and like not the same tone. 
um, for the uh, lace section. Um, anyway, so the second first clue ends at this lace section here, and I've done the first part of the second clue. I am almost finished with it. I think I have six more rows and then I can move on to, I think it's another lace section, but, um, but yeah, so I'm making progress on that. Um, this is pretty much the only thing I've been knitting on for the last week. Like this is what I bring, like, because it's garter stitch, it makes it, this part is garter stitch, which you can tell, um, is really easy for me to knit. Um, I bring knitting with me to school every day, uh, and I sit at my lunch break and while I'm waiting for, um, my ride home, um, I sit and I knit as well, but it's easy for me to just jump back like into it. Um, when, um, like when I just lost my train of thought when it's just garter stitch. There we go. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so this is just the stroll sock. Um, this one here with the, the lace section is the stroll sock in the dove heather colorway. Um, this, this shawl probably will be for me. Um, I'm not sure yet. I might give it to my grandmother, but we'll see. Um, she really likes blues, so I might give it to her. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I'm really excited about this. It has the same sort of cast on that um, that the Polana shawl did, which I mentioned before. Um, and I really like that method of cast on. I think it's really interesting. And I like the sort of asymmetrical kind of style to it. Like this end um, is a lot shorter than this end is, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm knitting these on a, um, on my Chowgu interchangeables it, on the 3.75 millimeter size, which is a US five. Um, I really like the Chowgu needles. I, I have to say, I love this cable. I think it is wonderful. Um, it is probably my best purchase of the, of, well, I guess of the year, it's not that long into the year, but, um, Anyway, um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I'm really excited about, um, I'm excited about finishing this because I definitely want it off the needles. Um, it's been fun to work on it though. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? So, um, actually I don't think I'll be talking about this yet. I think I will talk about my acquisitions. So, Kelsey, you're, you're on, my dog is laying right next to me. Um, you can't really see him. Let me see if I can. I've tightened my tripod too much. There we go. Oh, there he is. He's kind of being my co-host today. Oh, of course. I start talking about him when he wants to leave. Oh, or just readjust. Okay. Kelsier says hello. <laughs> um, anyway, so I have some acquisitions to share with you. Yeah, I know. That's not for you to chew on, honey. Anyway, <laughs> sorry for that interruption by dog. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about him in my, um, in my life section. So acquisitions for yarn because I needed something, basically, I needed something to match, um, let me find the cake for my Hallibop, Halebop, Hallibop, Hallibop? Anyway, to match, I needed something to match this. So I bought the, um, purple yarn, and I honestly don't know the color, color name of that. Um, I think I put, I put it on my Ravelry page for this project. Um, oh, honey. Um, so I couldn't just buy those because I wanted to get free shipping that so <laughs> Which is just so ridiculous. Anyway, so I bought two um, balls of the Felici um, Nitpicks Felici, 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 I'm gonna say Felici 
um, in the Beyond the Wall colorway. Oh, I guess I could show it to you this way so you could see the labels. Um, I'm assuming that that is a Game of Thrones reference, um, and I absolutely love these colors. Um, these There's two, I don't know if you can tell, but there's two tones of blue. So there's this, this darker one and then a, a lighter one that's, um, it's, I don't know, it's really pretty. Um, I'm going to be casting these on pretty soon. Um, I just have to cast them on. I don't know. Um, I don't know why I haven't cast them on yet. Um, I think it's probably just because I've mostly been working on those test knits. Um, and this is midterm week, which is why I will be talking about it, about life stuff. Um, I also bought Stroll Fingering in the Deep Waters Tonal colorway. Um, it's gonna be really difficult to see the difference between um, in the tonal. Um, mostly, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult to see. So it's um, these lovely shades of blue and purple um, sort of mixed in with each other light blue and dark blue and light purple and dark purple. It's really pretty, but on camera, as far as I can tell, it's really only showing up like like the one shade of blue and the one shade of purple. Anyway, it's really pretty. I'm excited to knit this into something. It'll probably just end up in socks um, because I think it is merino. Um, yeah, so it's 75 merino wool, 25 nylon. So it'll probably end up in socks. Um, I don't have any other shawl type things um, that I'm using, that I want a tonal color for. I didn't know if this would match um, that yarn or not, so I bought the two skeins and I decided on the other one. Um, I also bought a bunch of, um, I bought Dove Heather, that was when I bought that as well, and then I bought some white um, just for like heels, toes, and cuffs, which is probably what I'll use with this, um, sort of basic yarns. Um, and the other thing that I got in the mail, um, I got it, I usually saw it in the background, probably, um, but I got it in the mail a week ago or so, um, and this is my very first Mrs. Brown's bag. It is so pretty. Um, I love the the um, plain solid base and then the, the, the fabric that Mrs. Brown's Bags is, is famous for. Um, <clears throat> but I really, really love it. Um, it is a perfect shawl size bag. Um, it fits the three skeins of yarn that I'm using and my shawl pattern, um, or and my shawl, my work in progress shawl. Um, and I've been, and it fits pretty well in my bag, so I've been bringing it with me to school. Um, and it's got this lovely ribbon handle. It's really pretty, and the inside is just a uh, plain fabric. There's no pockets or anything, um, but that's totally fine because I don't need pockets. Um, but yeah, so that was my my big sort of acquisition. Well, one of my acquisitions. Another acquisition, which um, I will uh, um, leads us into the next section of the podcast, which will be about spinning. Um, so I watched all of the YouTube spinning, um, everything that was available on YouTube about spinning yarn, I watched. Um, and that is a lot. I spent a lot of time watching, watching YouTube. Um, and sometimes, so I do all kinds of needle crafts. I don't know if I've mentioned that on the podcast before, but um, I know I've mentioned crocheting. So I knit and I crochet and um, I cross stitch, I sew. I haven't been doing a lot of these lately, but um, I have learned how to do all of these things um, because one craft just isn't enough. Um, and I also tat, which is a form of lace making that was popular in the early 1900s. Um, even probably way earlier than that. But the last time it was really popular was in the early 1900s. Um, and yeah, so I do all kinds of 
of crafts. Um, I also do beadwork. I used to, I started Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Studios as a way to share the jewelry that I was making and I have morphed it into Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches because I really have only been doing knitting lately and it was hard for me to find anything to share that was jewelry related. So um, that's a little bit of history. <laughs> um, Maybe I will go into that a little bit, um, a little bit later after I'm done talking about spinning. So anyway, um, so now, um, <clears throat> I bought a drop spindle and it is a top roll drop spindle and, um, I bought some pre-carded, um, merino, I think it's a merino silk blend, um, yarn or roving in order to, um, uh, spin it and so I did that and I really really enjoyed it. It was a really fun um, I think that I would like to spin yarn with um, With main roving um, I think that would probably be where I would I mean if I ever I don't if I ever get good enough at it to and Do it often enough to make a shop for it um, that would be what the focus is, is that I would be using local yarns, um, or local roving, um, local to me, obviously, um, and supporting a main business, um, as well as, um, creating my own. So that's, um, that's something that I'm fairly passionate about. I like, um, shopping local. I really enjoy, um, buying things from little shops downtown. Um, I'd rather do that than go spend my money at Walmart or Target or whatever to, yeah, anyway, that's a whole other story. But anyway, the point of this is, um, that I bought a drop spindle and I'm going to show it to you now before I get off on another tangent. Um, so it's got this really pretty lotus flower. Oh, there we go. Lotus flower. Um, on the top of it and it is um, just a drop spindle. It's got a hook on the top and then um, and then this is the yarn that I spun. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is the yarn that I spun. Um, I washed it but then I realized that I didn't really heat set it so it ki it's kind of still, oh no, I guess it's a little it's a little better. It was really, really curly because I didn't actually like heat set it or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. Um, I don't know. I don't think that I have enough to make anything out of it. Um, and it is really thick. It, it's probably like a bulky, I would say that's probably a bulky weight and it is single ply, um, because I couldn't make it thin enough to make it double ply. Two ply. Double ply? I don't know. Anyway. I couldn't make it um, thin enough to make it two ply, so I just made it a single ply um, and bulky weight um, yarn. And I don't, honestly, I don't know if I do have enough to make anything out of it, but um, I might try. Maybe I'll make a pair of really short, um, like wrist warmers or something um, out of this uh, because it is really soft. Um, I mean, it is merino and silk, so, um, it is really, really soft. Um, and I would like to have something out of it. Um, and right now it smells like my wool wash because I, I did wash it. But anyway, so that's something that I think, um, I don't know if it'll make a regular appearance on the podcast just because I don't know how often I'm going to be able to buy roving in order to make it. And I don't know how much time I want to devote to spinning when I could be knitting. So we'll see. Um, it is a new craft venture for me. Um, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm really loving it. I really loved spinning this. This took me, it's really funny cause I got it in the mail and, um, so I guess this is still part of acquisitions, but anyway, so I got it in the mail and, um, I w immediately opened the package and, uh, immediately started spinning. I, I mean, I was finished with this within an hour of being home. I had forgotten um, my roommate cooked dinner and um, she texted me saying, hey, dinner's ready. And I waited until I was finished spinning in order to go get dinner so my dinner was cold. But anyway, um, it is so much fun. Um, 
and I did try a couple of different methods of spinning. Like I tried the like, um, the park method. So you like you you spin and then you hold it, um, like you park park it between like between your legs or under your arm while you draw the um, draw the twist up the the roving. Anyway. So I tried that method um, and I tried just like continuously letting it go. And, and so I'm, I haven't decided what I like better. Um, I would like to um, experiment with different kinds of every, I just want to experiment. Um, so this, this really is to me just uh, about experimenting. Um, and both of these things are like, they were pretty cheap. Um, this was like $20, $25 on Amazon. Um, and I just, I found like the first, first roving that looked good to me. I don't even remember how much it was. It was like $10 or something like that. So it really wasn't that expensive to get going. And, um, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So I kind of, I wanted to go to One Lupin, which is my local yarn store, um, and see about buying some of their roving, but, um, I haven't, I don't have, I haven't gotten, um, Uh, I didn't, wow, lost my train of thought. Um, I haven't wanted to go in there lately just because I know how much money I'm going to spend when I do. So, um, um, yeah, so there's that. Um, so that is basically, uh, I'm really, really excited about that. So anyway, that sort of wraps up my, um, my Yarny content. Um, and let me stick this over here. So the next section of my podcast is going to be about me or, um, my, my life in the last couple of days, um, last two weeks, I guess. Um, if you were just joining me for the Yarny content, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon, uh, in two weeks when I post another of these videos. Um, and if you're sticking around, then um, I am also glad you stuck around this long. Anyway, so <laughs> um, let's see. The last two weeks have been pretty busy uh, as far as school goes. Um, I've had a lot of papers and a lot of midterms to study for. A lot of statistics homework. Last Tuesday, not this past Tuesday, not a couple of days ago, but last Tuesday, um, I spent almost seven hours doing statistics homework and I still didn't finish really. I mean, I did no, I guess seven hours and, and I finished, but so at work, I work on campus in the commuter lounge. So, um, basically I'm there to make coffee and to answer questions. So when I'm not doing either of those things, I can actually work on homework, which is really perfect for me. Um, so I, um, I, yeah, was working on my homework while I was working and I have a seven hour shift and I spent three of those hours, um, knitting and four of those hours doing statistics homework. And then I went home and I spent two extra hours at home doing statistics homework. And then I didn't even finish after those two hours. I got so fed up with it that I just, I just flung the book away from me and, um, and just stopped doing it. So, um, and then I finished it the next morning and it took me an hour for the last problem. Um, basically my statistics professor assigns between 12 and 15 homework problems every week. And then she also assigns a 10 um, problem class participation assignment. And as stupid as it is, the class participation thing you have to do outside of class. And then we go over the answers in class and that's the part where it's participation. But it's really obnoxious for somebody who, and it's supposed to be group work. And it's really obnoxious for someone who is a non-traditional student because that's technically what I am because I'm 25 and I actually have like a life outside of work I, or outside of school, I guess. Like I work and, um, I don't know. Um, so technically I'm a non-traditional student because I waited until I was 25 to go back to school. 
and it's really difficult, especially for me because I don't actually have a car right now. Um, I'm riding the bus or getting a ride with my roommate. Um, it's hard for me to be on campus um, for so long um, to like do the assignment with someone because I'm not, I can't be on campus when I'm not in class or working um, because I have to come home to my dog. Um, especially my dog because he's just so anxious about life that like I can't I can't leave him alone for that long so um but yeah so it's really it's really difficult to um to do those assignments with anyone else so I've been doing them alone which is really difficult um because there's 10 of them and it's frustrating because it's not even it's mostly just the um that they're um it's not just one part problems, it's like five or six part problems, so really one question is six questions. So when I'm saying 12 to 15 problems, I mean 12 to 15 problems times six questions per problem. Um, but yeah, so it was taking a really long time and it's really frustrating. Um, I'm really glad we don't actually have, I don't actually have a midterm in that class, which makes me really happy. Um, so there's that, um, but yeah, school has been school. I mean, it's, it is what it is, but, um, I am, yeah, this is my last week before I have one more day of classes before spring break and I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm contemplating whether or not I even want to go to class tomorrow. Um, I have one class that's already canceled. Um, I probably, I'll probably end up going to my morning classes because I, again, statistics and all of those class participation things are due on Fridays. So that's the only day, like, that she really takes attendance. Um, but yeah, so, um, I may end up, I'm probably gonna go. But anyway, um, but yeah, so that's what's been going on with school. I have two novels and uh, a couple of proposals for projects due after break. And, um, I also have to write a narrative poem for my creative writing class, which I have no idea what I'm going to write about. That's going to be really fun whenever I sit down to do that because no clue what I actually want to write and, uh, or what would be interesting to write about in poetry form. Um, I'm not a poetry writer. Um, I do like writing. Um, I actually spend a lot of my time writing, but, um fiction mostly and um it's really difficult for me to write poetry I just don't I've never gotten it uh so yeah um but that's all about school so um the other sort of about these section is mostly about my dog so Kelsey has been on some medication lately for his anxiety um and it has helped a little bit um not 100 percent um it's not like a cure-all medication, which is fine. It's just lots of work for me um, to tire him out. I try and walk him as often as I can. It's been pretty cold, so I haven't been doing it lately. Um, but yeah, um, so he's doing good. Um, last night, uh, my roommate got home and he was asleep when she got home and just like woke up to the door opening and was like, freaking out and uh he just got on this sort of loop where he wouldn't stop barking and it was like I don't know um so sometimes he's a little difficult to deal with but but um yeah in the next couple of weeks what's happening is um actually there's a lot happening in the next two weeks um so the next time that I podcast with you I will be um just about to go to the main science festival um I am um volunteering at the Maine Science Festival this year and um, volunteering my time to to tweet actually about the festival like basically I'm managing Twitter for for the festival so that that will be really fun um but um but yeah I'm also using it as an event paper for my women gender and sexuality class um because 
there are a couple of things like um one of the speakers um on teen tech night is going to be uh about uh, the the subject is women in stem education so or not stem education but women in, in stem science so um i'm really excited about that um that part and um but yeah so we're coming out with uh yeah, so it's it'll be fun. I'm really excited for it. Um, the next two weeks are my spring break. Um, I'm not really going anywhere fun and exciting. Um, I am going to be going down to Belfast to my grandmother's house for a little bit. Um, I do have to work still, so I will probably be just going up there for the week. Um, and so I'll probably get a lot of knitting done. Um, we tend to watch movies and, and just sort of chill out at the house and... Um, try to make Kelsier as calm as possible, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's my dog and I will be going, um, uh, down to Belfast, um, probably on Monday, and we'll probably stay until Friday, because I do work Saturdays and Sundays at the Discover Museum. So, yeah, I think that's actually kind of it. Um, not a whole lot other than school has happened, and I went on about statistics forever, so, um, yeah, um, I had a midterm exam yesterday, and I don't think I have any other actual exams. I think I turned in all the rest of the assignments that I have due before spring break, so I don't actually have to do anything until I start work for those novels that I'm reading. Um, actually, I guess I could go into those. Um, actually, I'm reading, so I'm going to be reading um, The Dead Zone by Stephen King, for my creative writing class, we're talking about fiction for the second half of the semester, so I'm really excited about that. And then um, I'm also um, I'm also reading *The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde* by I'm gonna say his name is pronounced Yuno, you know? J U N O T Diaz. Um, he is um, I think he's from the Dominican Republic. Anyway, he has a wonderful, I've already started reading it because I finished the novel I was working on and I uh, needed something to read. And I just love his prose style. I think it's really, really entrancing. Like I start reading this book and I'm immediately in, in, in the story and I can't stop. I can't put it down. Um, which is a really good for, for a novel um, as far as I'm concerned. So but yeah, so there's that. Um, those are the two novels I'll be reading, and uh, I'm really excited about it actually because I haven't actually read a novel for pleasure in a long time. Um, I was working on a different novel for a class before, and I finished that, so now I was moving on to more more for class. But I mean, it's it's class and also something that I enjoy. So um, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited about that. Um, and it's going to be a really nice break from having to read textbooks because textbooks are awful. <laughs> Reading textbooks is so hard. That's been the hardest thing to get back into um, with going back to school. Anyway, I have talked long enough. Um, I will um, be recording again, not next Thursday, but the following Thursday. So if you guys want to come back and see what I've been up to, um, that would be wonderful. If you guys want to um, give me a thumbs up or subscribe to see when my videos are coming out, um, much appreciated. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything, um, or if you want me to go into, um, yeah, I guess if just if you have any questions. Um, have a wonderful Thursday, and I will see you again in two weeks. Bye!